This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before we go any further and you realise how fucking garbage this content is. But if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back. Now, for those of you who are channel regulars, you may be aware that Light Sworn is my absolute favourite deck. Well, over the last couple of weekends, we went to two different regionals and I played two different variations of the deck. Neither of them particularly well refined or trimmed down. However, I'm going to be covering both of them over this coming week. Not both in this video today, it's just JD Turbo. Uh, and then the next one will have the Chaos build that I played at this previous weekend, or rather it was actually yesterday up in Liverpool. So today's video is going to be focusing on the build that I took to the Geek Retreat Northampton Regional. I did absolutely fucking terrible. We did manage to take a scalp off some unexpected opponents though, including Flunderies. Unfortunately the deck has, well, a pretty terrible, terrible branded matchup. So we got whomped because, well, literally every round I played after that was Despia. Uh, apart from the one Ignis the match, which I got drawing, and then my final match was against Sacred Beasts, and it turns out a non-targeting, undestructible Heyman is actually kind of difficult to out with Judgment Dragon, because, you know, you can't fucking do anything about it. So, the deck didn't do particularly well, but this is not intended to be a super competitive deck or anything like that. So, if that's what you're here for, I apologize. This ain't the video for you. But if you're looking for something to just play with your friends or maybe just take to locals for a bit of fun, then that's exactly what this is about and exactly what it was intended to be for. So we're rolling back the years a little bit on this build. Now, as a quick note, before we do get into the profile, if you guys are looking to pick up any Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, maybe get ready for this format that's just dropped, check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. Use code RUFIO15, and there is a link in the description. If you use that code over on their eBay store, you'll get a nice 15% discount on your order. As last night, apologies that this isn't a physical profile. As you know, I'm sponsored, or, well, you may or may not know, but actually a lot of the cards I use are borrowed, apart from the actual Light Sworn cards I own. However, a good chunk of the core was stuff that I've now given back to the guys, so I'm just going to be covering the exact list that I used still. However, you're going to see it in a simulator, rather than, you know, physically seeing the cards laid out. But I'm going to stop waffling. Let's get stuck into the profile. Okay, Duel List, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. An absolutely terrible... JD Turbo deck profile. We're going to talk a little bit about what I played, why I played it, and changes I probably would have made in hindsight, although this isn't really all that serious. Again, I took this to a regional. Uh, we only ended on the one win, one draw, but if you see my vlog, if you're interested in that, you'll see what happened. But essentially, we played Flunder, we battered them, we played Ignista, uh, we managed to get a win just in time with Snow and Grave in the battle phase, uh, and then we proceeded to play Despia every single round after that, which unfortunately has a cracked matchup against this. This deck just cannot compete with it, which is really, really unfortunate. Uh, and then our final round, in fact, in the end, so it was like four rounds of Despia after that. And then our final round was against Sacred Beasts, which had an unoutable Heyman on the field. Uh, we tried to Mystic Mine them, and then they were randomly playing Eldritch Traps, so we're able to pop it. Bit unfortunate. So I think a lot of that was down to matchups, of course. This is not a super competitive deck profile. It's a really casual one that I just wanted to take to a regional for a bit of fun. So we're going to talk through it anyway. But I digress. Let's get stuck into the list. We'll talk through what I played, uh, yeah, and what went well and what really didn't. So triple copies of JD it is JD Turbo. We just want it in our hand, whether that's opening hand or whether we see it later on. We just want to see this card. Uh, so we're playing triple copies. Not much else to say. Triple copies of Wolf, uh, one of the best cards in Light Swarm. One of the main reasons we play it, you're just milling this over is godly. Triple copies of Raiden, uh, yeah, just not much to say. The best normal summon basically in here. Uh, maybe aside from Luna, but I think this is slightly better overall. We ran one copy of Lila Twilight Swarm. Uh, the Twilight cards I'm usually a bit weird about using. Um, Raiko's okay, and Lila's good in formats where Pendulum is everywhere or there's a lot of face-up stuff on the field because it just pops it straight away. So this is good into Flunder. If they play uh, the continuous spell, they play the field spell, you just pop it. Um, it's good into Branded Lost because, again, you can just pop it. Uh, and things like that, so just a really cool option to have in there. Um, didn't come up an awful lot, but yeah, it's a really cool idea on paper. Of course, it's dark, so it gives us options for the Chaos Package that we are running too. Um, a single copy of the standard Lila, again, just breaking any back row is pretty cool. 
Um, yeah, just a, a really cool normal summon. Again, it came up a few times when I played it, but yeah, it wasn't super insane. Two copies of Felice. Um, a bit easier to mill it out with monster effects uh, than maybe before, but the risk is, of course, that you always hit with the spells. It's a bit sad, but I think two copies is just about right. Three is definitely way too much. I'd never run three, and I think one is just that little bit too few. You really do just want to try and hit it and hope. Of course, the downside to that is you may occasionally brick on it, but in a 48 card deck, a little bit less likely. Then on triple copies of Lumina, uh, our second best normal summon after our Raiden. Uh, a lot of the time it sets up our plays and gets us building a board presence. It's just a really cool option there. A single copy of Minerva. Um, yeah, just again, really cool option. Just mills another one over. It's another name. And of course, can help you search your dragon if you have enough targets in the graveyard. After that, we have Fairy Tale Snow. Not much to say about this. It's another light. It's another type. So, of course, helps you get into your curious place if you want to. Banishing stuff in the graveyard, you just don't care. And it's another four as well, which helps you get into your rank four place too. So, yeah, just absolutely fantastic. A single copy of Token Collector, which on paper was like, if you just mill it out, you don't care. If you see it in your hand, you don't care. If they're playing anything with tokens, this solves the problem. And, of course, it's a four. So, in absolute worst case scenario, if you've got another extender, you can normal some of this and say make one of the baby dragons and make a rank four or go from there. So just that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, just not terrible. Triple copies of Danger Mothman. Uh, good on paper, not the best in practice. Really cool because it's a level four. So of course, it helps you get into the rank four plays, which is a nice touch. It's a dark as well. The downside, of course, is that it helps your opponent discard outlet as well because they always snipe it. They always bloody do. Uh, and unfortunately, in the modern game, your opponent loading stuff into graveyards not normally a good thing. So maybe you want to consider omitting. Maybe you play like the Perform Edge package instead with Trick Clown. Um, with You play the Heroic Challenger and all that as well. And just give you those options instead. Uh, Damage Juggler, Hat Tricker, all of those rather than this kind of thing. But just an idea. Triple copies are safer. Uh, enables you to add back JD if you mill it out. So it just means you've got a way of doing that consistently. And of course, if you just normal summon it, you can send it to get into one of your dragons and then go off with your plays from there. So just something to think about. Speaking of those dragons, we have a single copy of Collapse Serpent and a single copy of White Dragon Wyver Burster. Not much to say about these. Again, they just enable you to go into rank four plays a little bit easier. Uh, synchro plays for eights, which of course then they can search each other. And yeah, all that good stuff. Just a really cool option for extenders. Uh, triple copies of Solar Recharge, you're playing loads of names in here, just dig deep. The same, four charge of Light Brigade, probably the best spell in the deck, it's just absolutely nuts. Uh, Mill 3 for cost is really cool, and Search, at this point you don't even care if they hit it because, yeah, you just don't give a fuck, you've milled 3. We decided to play Triple Regeki in the main, the idea here was that I didn't feel like if we went first that we could beat a lot of the hand traps that were in the game. Uh, so this gave us a going second option. It was probably a mistake in hindsight. But the idea was like, okay, yeah, you just, you know, you bang down like a mystic mine and you nuke the board under J uh, with JD whilst under mine because they're likely to have more monsters than you. Or you can regeki to get rid of the board, that kind of thing. Didn't really come up. And a lot of the time it got sided out, unfortunately. But it, on paper, the idea worked, but I probably wouldn't play this like this. I'd maybe move it to the side instead. Uh, on to the rest of our spells, triple copies of Chaos Space. Uh, yeah, this card's bonkers. It also lets you add JD as long as you have a dark in hand. Unfortunately, it doesn't trigger Mothman, which would have been absolutely insane. But as long as you have a dark, you can get to JD if you have this card in your hand. Pretty cool. Next up, we have triple copies of Mystic Mine. We're playing a bigger deck than most people. Um, and a lot of the time, you can't really break their boards natively. So slapping down a mine, followed by summon JD to break the board works really well. Uh, or, of course, you can just switch off the board and go, how many cards do you have in your deck? And if they're smart and they realize they don't have a way to out this card, they will scoop on the spot. A lot of people are not smart and they'll wait. And, yeah, that usually just doesn't work out well for them because they end up decking out anyway, so who cares? Um, a single copy of Reasoning. Reasoning is just nuts every time you use it. And the, re the rest of our power one of so we've got a single Terraform in for our field spells. Single copy of Monster Reborn. Not much to say there. Uh, same for Feather Dust. The same for Rota. It searches Raiden. And a single copy of Foolish Burial. If you wanted to improve this a little bit, you could play other level 4s instead of maybe Mothman and stuff. Again, as discussed earlier, you've got some options there. Or like a Photon Thrasher works really well. All that kind of stuff. Just again, more options. I would probably cut the Regekis for other extenders and just go with that and, you know, just hit more monsters. Into the extra deck, uh, we're playing Super Poly on the side, so Starving Venom seemed like a good option. A uh, single copy of Michael, we're playing Light Sworn and Spot Removal's great. Uh, Borrowload Savage is good in theory, but never really came up, because unfortunately, you're not making a lot of links. So, yeah, this probably could just go, uh, and I don't know, you play like the zombie vampire thing instead, so that you can, uh, yeah, you can easily just go into like a rank 8 play and just mill more. 
Chaos Ruler, absolutely fantastic. This card's just nuts. You're going to make it most games. Uh, Black Rose, just a good board wipe. Uh, FA Dawn Drags still gives you an option for a negate turn one if you can't get into anything else. So this, again, does come up with like weird scenarios, but it does come up a lot. Uh, access Code Talker to wipe the board. Uh, if you don't have this, well, I don't know. There's some other options, I guess. A bit like Zeus and things like that instead, maybe. Um, yeah, just a cool card. Curious is Curious, another Light Sworn name. Uh, we've got the Nightmare Package here, as well as Dark. Yeah, all seem okay. Dark didn't come up an awful lot and wouldn't because, well, yeah, DP is not really in the game at the moment. Double copies of Minerva, we're playing Light Sworn. I think you could probably cut this down to one and use the extra space for something a bit more useful. Uh, single copy of Baguska, because sometimes this is sufficient on its own to just buy you a couple of turns. Abyss Dweller switches off certain decks, so really cool option. Now, in terms of the extra deck, what would I change? Well, I'd maybe try out the Psych again Punisher thing that's just came out. Uh, if you think you can get to it consistently, that's a really cool option. Um... Yeah, there's a whole bunch of different stuff you could try. The Borrowed Savage could probably go for something a bit more useful. Uh, and again, I'd probably put Zeus in here just so you've got a board wipe option. Now, onto the side deck to round this off. So, we've got Triple Goblin's Lightning Storm. Um, yeah, this is entirely up to you. Maybe it doesn't need to be in here. Just swap it for the Regekis and swap the Regekis for some extenders. You could also run the likes of Twin Twisters and things like that so you don't get anti spelled. A triple copies of Super Poly. I was really scared of Despia, and rightly so. Unfortunately, I just didn't see it enough because you are playing a big deck. So just you just kind of have to put it in and hope, and unfortunately, we never saw it. Triple copies of Cosmic Cyclone, again, for anti-spell mostly, but it can hit other stuff like Scythe and things like that, which in this deck is not the end of the world because you play like big boss monsters and things, but it's still pretty annoying. A triple copies of There Can Be Only One, you tend not to end on multiples of the same card or the same type, so this can come up a lot, but it also auto-wins against like, like, like the Flunder, against Salamangre and things like that. And then finally, triple copies of D-Barrier, uh, because we hate fusion cards, and also the fact that if you're playing into the likes of Sword Soul, say, of course you can switch off their turn effectively using this unless they've opened a bunch of 10 years. But that is it for the deck profile. As discussed, this is kind of more of a casual option, something maybe you want to play with your friends, or maybe even take to locals for a bit of a laugh. Definitely wouldn't recommend taking it to regional like I did, I just really didn't want to play any of the top decks. But hopefully you've learned a little bit from this about some ideas about what to do, what not to do, and maybe giving yourself some food for thought on things that you might want to try out for yourselves. Now it is worth noting at the time of recording, I've also recorded the chaos list that I used yesterday at the time of recording this video for another regional, so that will be coming out. And of course keep your eyes peeled for the vlog so you can keep an idea of how my matchups went, how my days went, what kind of games I was playing, what I thought worked well at the time, and what didn't work well at the time as well. But anyway, that's enough waffling on for me. Thank you very much for making it this far into the video. Hopefully by virtue of the fact that you have, you've enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.